Yo, what's good? It's Griff413 here back in the day, and today, guys, Forza has just dropped 77 brand new cars coming to Forza Motorsport 7, and man, oh man, am I excited because each one of these cars is a JDM car, and I love the JDM car, guys. I, I just do JDM cars, that is, not the JDM car, guys, because some of them could be a little bit too much sometimes. But that's beside the point. That's a whole nother topic that we are not going to talk about today. But anyway, though, I mean, the JDM cars, they're just freaking awesome. I love them. They make some of the best drift cars in the world. As like, I mean, just look at this car that I'm driving right now. This is the Nissan Silvia S14 with the Boss, like, white body kit on it. It is just a freaking amazing car. I love it. I love it. I love it. But anyway, let's go ahead and get on into it. So first up, what I will say is that there are four brand new cars coming to Forza Motorsport 7. Now, two of them are returning from the Xbox 360 console, with two of them being brand new to Forza entirely. And each one of these cars, guys, I am so excited to be coming into the game, as each one of them is just beautiful and gorgeous and just loved. I mean, they are freaking awesome. I am so excited to be seeing all these cars. But let's get into the first one. The first one is the 2000 Honda Prelude Type SH. Which, this car wasn't necessarily fast, rocking a 200 horsepower inline 4 engine, which, I mean, at the time was actually not too terribly slow, but it wasn't necessarily quick, per se. I mean, a lot of, like, the old Hondas weren't necessarily fast, and I mean, when you think about some of the horsepower that some modern cars are pushing out, like, I mean, hell, what, what's a Toyota Camry do today? Over 200, right? Jesus Christ, guys, I mean, that's a lot of horsepower. And for just one car to be rocking only 200 horsepower back in 2000s was just... That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad, if I do say so myself. In fact, when I was actually looking for a first car, the Honda Prelude was actually one of the ones that I was looking for. Now, when they were brand new, they were considered to be, like, you know, sort of that entry-level luxury sports car sort of deal. I mean, they weren't necessarily sporty, and they weren't necessarily luxurious, but I mean... It, it was just sort of like the entry level, kind of like what the Honda Accord Coupe is today. Although with that new model, I mean, that thing is... Uh, huh. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But anyway, I mean, this car, it, it was just one of those cool cars to have. Especially when I was in high school. I mean, which... Shit, to think about it, I was in high school five years ago when I graduated. Oh, shit. That's crazy to think about, but... I, I love this car. I'm really excited to be seeing it come into the game. But anyway, let's get into the second one, which is none other than the 2003 Infiniti G35 Coupe, which honestly is one of the cars that I'm thinking about as buying as my next car. There are a couple cars on the list, including the Nissan 350Z, the Infiniti G35, and the Honda S2000. Now, I'm a bigger guy. I won't lie. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit into half of these cars. I, but I really, really would love to rock an Infiniti G35. It's, it's been on my list for a long time, especially because one of my friends when I was like in high school, his grandfather owned one of them, and he he treat he babied it, guys. He babied it. It almost never left the garage. It, it was just treated like, just I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I mean, you were not allowed to touch that car, and I was in love with it. I was in love with it. Every time I'd see it, I'd be like, oh my god, that car is pretty. That car is pretty. This car is just loved by tuners as well. I mean, just it's got that style for it. It just works. It just works. So many people have put really, really cool modifications onto these. And every time I see one that's just got even a little bit of modification, you know, it, it looks good. That's all it is. It just looks good. In fact, did you guys watch the movie Suicide Squad? You know that car that uh, the Joker was rocking? Well, you know what that car is? That is an Infinity G35. Although, what I will say is it's not entirely an Infinity anymore, because what happens is once you go ahead and buy this certain kit for it, it becomes the Vader G35, which is just a freaking beautiful, gorgeous car. It, it's kind of one of those cars that makes you look rich without really being rich, because honestly, to get this car, I think the body kit is $11,000, which is actually probably going to cost you more than the Infinity G35 itself. And then, you can also get this optional, like, interior redone, which is, like, $3,000. I mean, 
It is so worth it, guys. I would totally, if I had the money to do it, I would get an Infinity G35, put some mods into like the engine, make it a little bit more powerful, and then go ahead and put this Vader kit on there as well as doing like the whole interior. And man, oh man, I would love that car. I would baby that car. Oh, it would be so awesome. I would be so excited about it. I cannot wait for this car to be coming back to the game. And I really hope that they put some really cool modifications into it. Because one of the things that I will say that Forza was really hitting on this week was body kits. Because as you guys know, Forza Horizon 3 introduced wide body kits into the game, which has made a lot of people happy. And of course, today they officially announced that they're going to have wide body kits in Forza Motorsport 7, which isn't really news as if you guys watched the trailer, you did see a couple of cars rocking some wide body kits in there. So, nothing really new to be like freaking out about like, oh my god, Forza Motorsport 7's got wide body We We already knew it. We already knew it. So, but next up what we have though is our first brand new car of the game, which is the 1988 Mitsubishi Starion? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sometimes car manufacturers, they do not get, like, names right. Starion? Starion? I, I, I don't know. ESR, ESI-R. So, I mean, this car is, it's a looker. I'll give it that. I don't know how I feel about it now, but, I mean, it, it looks like one of those cars that would really grow on me, especially to end up putting in a wide body kit for this. As I was reading, actually, some, uh auto blogs and things like that about this car before actually making this video and they were mentioning that you know back in like 1988 people were saying that these these had the most beautiful fender flares that had ever graced a showroom i mean it does look good i'll give it that it's one of those cars though that i just it just hasn't grown on me yet now for the u.s market though what's kind of interesting about this car is that this car was not only sold as a mitsubishi because at the time Dodge actually owned Mitsubishi. So they actually branded it off as Chrysler, Dodge, and Plymouth even. I mean, that's how hard it was. And they didn't even change like the regular name. Like it, it was very similar to the Dodge and Plymouth Neons. They're the exact same car, just a different badge. Just a different badge. And I mean, it, it, it was bad. It was bad because it, it's a little bit confusing as well. I mean, four different brands for the same car. I guess it's kind of like the uh, the 1988 version of the Subaru BRZ slash GT86 slash FRS. I mean, I guess that's what you could call it. Except all of those are owned by Toyota. Although, I guess at the time, Mazda was owned by Chrysler Group. So, that's that. I'm getting off topic now. But, I mean, this car, it, it's not too bad. It is not too bad. It's rocking 188 horsepower. So, it's not necessarily fast. Uh, but, I mean... I, I think it'll grow on me. It'll grow on me after a little while. But finally, our last car that is coming to Forza Motorsport 7 is none other than the 2005 Subaru Legacy B4 2.0 GT. Which, honestly, guys, I've seen some of these before in, like, the real world. And, I mean, they are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. I had a friend that actually rocked one of these back in high school. And I mean, it, it, it was pretty quick. I will give it that. It was pretty quick, at least back when I was in high school. Uh, I mean, they're not necessarily like super powerful, like nothing super impressive. But the thing is, though, is he didn't like it. He wanted an Impreza so bad, but his parents convinced him to get a Legacy uh, at the time because they thought it was more practical. And I mean, he, he didn't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily that he didn't like it, but he just wanted that Impreza so much more badly. And I mean, it... Still, though, this car is gorgeous. Absolutely love it. In fact, for the time, I kind of like the Legacy styling over the Impreza. I, that's just me, though. That is just me. Now, the cool things about this car is that it actually won the Japanese Car of the Year in 2004. So just a year before our 2005 that's coming to Force Motorsport 7. And as well, in the U.S., this car won the Automobile All-Stars Award which is a pretty big deal. And the reason it won is because it's a car that could do everything. You know, it's a car that you could take just like on a nice cruise around the city. And then if you wanted to, you could take it off road and go on those country backers. It, it's just a great car overall. And in fact, since a lot of you guys are watching my channel right now here on YouTube, 
Some of you guys might know a little channel called Mighty Carmont. The one of their big cars that they have done, like a big project, Super Gramps, is none other than a Super Legacy. I mean, that car is quick. An 11 second quarter mile time. At least that's what Gramps was. That's what Gramps was. I don't know if they. I, I can't remember off the top of my head what Super Gramps did, but I mean. They're, they're just gorgeous cars. They are amazing. I'm absolutely loving all these. Now, just a quickle, uh, just a quickle, guys. I said a quickle. I don't know what the hell that is. But just a quick little bit of some cars that are, I guess, audible mentions that are coming back. First up, what we have is we have our Nissan Silvia Aero that we got rocking right now. Then we have the 2017 Honda NSX, or Acura NSX, that is. I don't think they actually launched it under Honda. That's, yeah. <laughs> so, and then we have the 2016 Honda Civic Type R, which I'm really, really hoping that maybe with the DLC that we'll be seeing the 2018 Honda Civic Type R, because not a big fan of the 2016 styling, but that 2017 though. Oh God, that car looks gorgeous. That car looks gorgeous. And as you guys already know, it wouldn't be a Gura 413 video if I didn't crash into a tree. So, I mean, it, it, it's going to be a freaking awesome, freaking awesome game. I am loving every single one of these cars that are coming out. Tree number two. Tree number two. But anyway, though, leave a comment down below about which car you guys are most excited about for Forza Motorsport 7, as I look forward to hearing about them down in the comment section down below. And again, if you guys want to, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at twitter.com forward slash square 413 and instagram.com forward slash square 413. And as well, if you like this video, you can go ahead and make sure to hit that like button down below for us because you guys already know your support is so greatly appreciated. And make sure to subscribe for more videos coming out all the time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.